to Seriously Read a Book. My name's John. My daughter Rose is here visiting us. Say Hello. hi, Rose. Hello. We are picking up with Mrs. Lane is a Pain by Dan Gutman. Uh, this is part two, so we're going to read chapters five through eight. That's where we're going to be in the book. And if you're following along with this version, it, we're picking up at page 31. All right, here we go. Chapter five, next. The last thing I want to do after school is stay after school. But this day was different. As soon as the three o'clock bell rang, the gang and me rushed to the all-purpose room to try out for elementary school's got talent. I don't know why they call it the all-purpose room. It can't be used for all purposes. I mean, you can't go skydiving in there. Anyway, lots of kids in all the grades from first through fifth showed up to try out. We had to wait in line behind a bunch of first grade munchkins so we could write our names on the sign-up sheet. I think we've got a lot of talented students at elementary school, said Mrs. Lane. I can't wait to see y'all show your talent. Mr. Klutz was there too. I guess he wanted to make sure nobody tried to do an act that involved farting. Can you tell us what the secret grand prize will be? asked Andrea, who loves to win prizes. If I told you, it wouldn't be a secret, Mrs. Lane replied. She took the sign-up sheet and sat in the front row. Each of us had one minute to do our act. Okay, Mrs. Lane said to the first kid on the list. Show me what you got. It was a second grade girl with red hair. She said she was double jointed. Then she got down on the floor and wrapped both her legs around her neck at the same time. Here is a picture of that crazy business. Ah! <laughs> that is what she did. I heard Ryan can do that. Whoa. That's a talent? Who knew? Next, shouted Mrs. Lane. Two fourth grade boys climbed up on stage and acted out a scene from Star Wars. It ended with them fighting with lightsabers. That was pretty cool. Next, a girl from the first grade came out. I can name all the months of the year that have the letter Z in them. She said, none of the months of the year have a letter Z in them, Mrs. Lane told the girl. There, I did it. <laughs> Next. I can write my name in the air with my butt, said this first grade boy. Next. <laughs> After that, some fifth graders did a skit about four bananas that go out for a walk and are suddenly attacked by meteors. It made no sense at all. <laughs> they were followed by a bunch of clumsy girl dancers, bad lip syncers, terrible rappers, and a dumb head who spun <laughs> plates on a stick. I slapped my head. Man, those acts were horrible. They should call the show Elementary School's Got No Talent. It was going to be a cinch for one of our gang to win the secret grand prize, but we had to sit through all the dumb acts. It was taking a million hundred hours. I had looked up a few jokes in a joke book I had in my backpack, but I didn't know if they were funny or not. I was getting nervous. Next, shouted Mrs. Lane. Michael got up on stage and did a magic trick where he made some flowers pop out of his sleeve. It was cool. Wanna see me make a candy bar disappear? Asked Michael. Sure, said Mrs. Lane. Michael took a candy bar out of his pocket and ate it. See, he said, I made it disappear. Next! Ryan came out. I can communicate with dolphins, he said. Do you have a dolphin with you? Asked Mrs. R Mrs. Lane. No, Ryan said. I can talk with them on the phone. Next! <laughs> oh, that's, there's a picture of Ryan talking about communicating with the dolphins. Apparently dolphins use use mobile phones, didn't know that. It was Emily's turn, she even, she looked even more nervous than me. I would like to do a dance from the Little Mermaid, she said. Emily started to dance, and to tell you the truth, she wasn't all that bad. But right in the middle, she spun around and fell down. It's funny when people fall down, Nobody knows why. I tried not to laugh, because it's not nice to laugh when people fall down. And when they start crying, 
like Emily did. It's not funny at all. Mrs. Lane came up on stage and put her arm around Emily. You know, I fell down just like that when I was on America's Not Stupid. She said, You did? Emily said, wiping her eyes. What happened? Everybody laughed at me, said <laughs> Mrs. Lane. Helping. I was humiliated and I messed up when I was on Are You Smarter Than a Turnip too? It's okay to mess up. We all do it. Emily stopped crying. Mrs. Lane went back to her seat in the front row. Next! Some kid came out and burped the whole alphabet in ABC order. It was gross, but also hilarious. <laughs> Next! Andrea sang the Tomorrow song. It was totally lame. Next! Finally, it was my turn. I was nervous when I climbed up on the stage. I would like to tell some jokes, I said. Go ahead, AJ, said Mrs. Lane. Why did the monkey fall out of the tree? I asked. Why, everybody replied. Because it was dead, I said. Nobody laughed. I guess this crowd doesn't go for the dead monkey jokes. I tried another one. I like to study for tests underwater. I said, maybe that's why I'm below sea level. Nobody laughed. Get it? I asked, sea level? Sea level? Maybe I should have tested my jokes out in advance. My forehead was starting to sweat. 30 seconds, AJ, said Mrs. Lane. Uh, do you know why I have holes in my underwear? I asked. Well, how else would I get my legs into them? Nobody laughed. I thought I heard the sound of crickets out of the all-purpose room. It was, it was, this was terrible. Usually, all I have to do is say the word underwear and kids start laughing. Next! When everybody was finished, Mrs. Lane stood up and gave us a standing ovation. But first, here's a picture of AJ looking super nervous. Look at that guy. He looks like he's a wreck. Oh my goodness. So Mrs. Lane is clapping. Oh, and there's a footnote here that says, well, I guess she couldn't have given us a standing ovation if she was still sitting down. I really loved your acts, she said. Y'all should rehearse as much as possible before the talent show next week. Oh, before you go, I have some news for y'all. There's going to be a surprise guest at the talent show. Did you hear that? Andrea shouted. There's going to be a surprise guest at the talent show. There's going to be a surprise guest at the talent show. There's going to be a surprise guest at the talent show. In case you were wondering, everybody was saying there was going to be a surprise guest at the talent show. Who will the surprise guest be? Asked Alexia. If I told you, it wouldn't be a surprise, said Mrs. Lane. I love surprises because you never know what's going to happen. I don't. That's why they're called surprises. You don't love surprises, Rose? Well, a few of them. Some of them I don't. Huh. You're not a fan of surprises. Some of them I don't like. How about presents? Yes. Huh. Interesting. I like those. those are good surprises. I was sure that the surprise guest was going to be Mr. Hind. He used to be our music teacher, but then he made a hit rap record and became famous. Okay, let's call it a day, said Mrs. Lane. Y'all work on your acts, and I'll see y'all at rehearsal tomorrow. Be here at 4 o'clock sharp. Chapter 6, Fantastic News. I showed up the next day for rehearsal at 4 o'clock sharp. The only problem was that Mrs. Lane wasn't there. Where's Mrs. Lane? Where's Mrs. Lane? Where's Mrs. Lane? In case you're wondering, everybody was asking where Mrs. Lane was. We waited around for a million hundred minutes. Something was definitely wrong. Uh, I hope Mrs. Lane is okay, said Emily, who worries about everything. You'll never believe who walked into the door at that moment. Nobody, it would hurt if you walked into a door. But you'll never believe who walked into the doorway. It was Mr. Klutz. Where's Mrs. Lane? We all asked him. She's not coming in today, he told us. I had to fire her. <gasps> what? I'm sorry to tell you this, Mr. Klutz said, but elementary schools got talented canceled. What? Everybody shouted. I had no idea how much money it costs to put on a show like that, said Mr. Klutz. We need to hire a professional lighting and sound company. We have to pay for extra security. We have to get a permit from City Hall to keep the school open at night. We have to print up programs. And of course, we have to pay Mrs. Lane. It's all very expensive. We just don't have that kind of money in the school budget. 
bummer in the summer. I was just starting to get excited about the talent show, Ryan said. Me too, said Michael. Oh, look, here's a picture of Mr. Klutz telling everybody that it's not going to happen. Everybody looks bummed out, don't they? Yeah. Everybody was sad. We started gathering up our stuff to go home. I'm sorry, kids, Mr. Klutz said. Maybe we'll have a talent show next year. But you'll never believe who walked into the door at that moment. Nobody. I thought we went over that already. Mrs. Lane came walking in the doorway. She was balancing a baseball bat on one foot. At the same time, she was balancing an egg on a spoon in her mouth. It was amazing. There's a picture. I have fantastic news, y'all. She shouted, a company's going to sponsor America Elementary School's Got Talent. Yippee! Everybody shouted. Sponsor? I asked, what does that mean? <laughs> it means they're going to give us the money we need to put on the show, said Mrs. Lane. Yippee! I shouted, what company? Porky's Pork Sausages, she told us. I just got off the phone with the owner of the company, Mr. Porky. Well, if that's true, said Mr. Klutz, elementary school's got talent. We'll go on as scheduled. Yippee! Everybody shouted. Hooray for Porky's Pork Sausages. They saved the talent show. Okay, said, said Mrs. Lane. I'll see y'all at 4 o'clock sharp tomorrow for rehearsal. Chapter 7, Who Needs TV? I showed up for rehearsal at 4 o'clock sharp the next day, and guess what? Mrs. Lane wasn't there. Again. Where's Mrs. Lane? asked Alexia. Where's Mrs. Lane? asked Neil the nude kid. Where's Mrs. Lane? asked Michael, in case you were wondering, everybody was asking where Mrs. Lane was. But then she came in, she was jumping on a pogo stick while dribbling a basketball and playing Mary Had a Little Lamb on a harmonica all at the same time. It was amazing. I have fantastic news! she shouted. Are you ready for this? Mr. Porky of Porky's Pork Sausages just told me he's going to put elementary school's got talent on TV. The girls started screaming. Ee -ee! We're going to be on TV. We're going to be on TV. We're going to be on TV. In case you're wondering, all the girls were saying we're going to be on TV. Being on TV must be the greatest thing in the history of the world. And there are all the girls very excited about the being on the TV. And there's Mrs. Lane holding the focus stick. I've seen people jump into pools of mud to get on TV. I've seen people eat bugs to get on TV. People will do anything to get on TV. Mr. Klutz came running in with three of the teachers, Ms. Hannah, Mrs. Rupee, and Miss Small. We heard elementary school's got talent is gonna be on TV, shouted Ms. Hannah, our art teacher. Can we be in it too? I can make finger shadows of circus animals. Uh, I can play the nose flute, said Miss Small, our gym teacher. I can do impersonations of nursery rhyme characters, said Mrs. Rupee, our librarian. Yes, teachers can participate, said Mrs. Lane, but there's something I need to talk to y'all about. Mr. Porky has three demands that must be met before he agrees to put Elementary School's Got Talent on TV. What are his demands? asked Mr. Klutz. Well, first of all, said Mrs. Lane, he wants a panel of judges to decide the winner of the talent show, and he wants to be one of the judges. I have no problem with that, said Mr. Klutz. What are his other two demands? His second demand is that he wants every act in the talent show to mention Porky's Pork Sausages at least once, said Mrs. Lane. Well, Okay, I suppose we can do that, said Mr. Klutz. After all, his company is sponsoring the show. A bunch of other grown-ups came running in. Mr. Docker, Dr. Brad, Miss Lazar, Mr. Mackey, Ms. Coco, Ms. Leakey, and Mrs. Cooney. We heard that elementary school's got talent's going to be on TV, yelled Mr. Docker, our science teacher. I can recite the periodic table of elements in order. Little asterisk down to the bottom with a footnote. Look it up. I can tap dance, said Ms. Coco, our gifted and talented teacher. I can throw my voice, somebody said, but we didn't know who it was because they threw their voice. Yes, y'all can be in the talent show too, said Mrs. Lane. Eek, screamed our school nurse, Mrs. Cooney. I need to fix my hair. Why is it broken? I asked. Hold on a minute, said Mr. Klutz. 
What is Mr. Porky's third demand? Oh yes, there is one more thing that Mr. Porky wants before he'll put Elementary School's Got Talent on TV, said Mrs. Lane. He thinks it would be more exciting if the panel of judges would hit a big gong, if they don't like an act, and if a contestant gets gonged, he or she gets thrown into a tank full of sharks. What? That's gotta be the dumbest idea in the history of the world. Is he nuts? asked Mr. Klutz. Mr. Porky wants to feed our students to sharks? That's bananas, said Mrs. Hannah. That's loopy, said Mrs. Rupee. Well, it doesn't have to be sharks, said Mrs. Lane. It could be, oh, I don't know, vultures. He wants to feed our students to vultures? asked Mr. Klutz. That's off the wall, said Miss Small. That's loony, said Mrs. Cooney. That's bizarre, said Miss Lazar. Oh, and it's a picture of potentially AJ being thrown into a pool full of AJ eating sharks. Well, what if they were thrown into a pit of burning lava, asked Mrs. Lane. That's wacky, said Mr. Mackey. That's loco, said Ms. Coco. That's freaky, said Ms. Leaky. Where would we possibly get a pit of burning lava anyway? asked Mr. Klutz. We could go to rent a pit of burning lava, said Mrs. Lane. You can rent anything. Are you off your rocker? asked Mr. Docker. Have you gone mad? asked Dr. Brad. That's it, said Mr. Klutz angrily. I'll give in to Mr. Porky's first two demands, but now I've got to draw the line. This is a school, not some silly TV show. You tell Mr. Porky that we say no. We're going to do Elementary School's Got Talent without him. I don't care whether or not it's on TV. Who needs TV anyway? Yeah, who needs TV? Who needs TV? Who needs TV? In case you're wondering, everybody was saying, yeah, who needs TV? Wait a minute. I need TV. You do? Me? Mm -hmm. I don't. Where do we keep our TV, Rose? In the bookcase. In the bookcase! <laughs> With the doors, doors closed. I don't like looking at it. All right, here we go. Chapter 8, The World Around Me. In the end, Mr. Porky backed down from his third demand. He agreed to put Elementary School's Got Talent on TV, even if the contestants were not attacked by sharks, vultures, or burning lava. That was a relief, because I was sure to be the one who would get attacked by sharks, vultures, or burning lava. Nobody was laughing at my jokes at our last rehearsal. I was getting really nervous. Elementary School's Got Talent was the next night and I didn't have an act. Mrs. Lane pulled me aside at the end of rehearsal. You know, nobody tells plain old jokes anymore, AJ, she told me. These days, comedians do what is called observational humor. What's that? I asked. They sort of observe the world around them and talk about how funny it is, said Mrs. Lane. Maybe you should try that, AJ. Oh, and here's a picture of Mrs. Lane explaining modern-day comedians to AJ. I went home and observed the world around me, but my house wasn't very funny. My backyard wasn't very funny. My bedroom wasn't very funny. I didn't have anything funny to say. I thought about it long and hard. I thought about it so hard that my brain hurt. Then I came to my decision. I was going to drop out of the talent show. Somebody else would win the secret grand prize. And that is the end of chapter...